There was supposed to be a ceasefire during our New Year's Day. Of course, then the, the enemy knew that, so they mortared us. They always sent recon out, so go find them. You know, find out where those mortars came from. And we got online and start, started moving through the jungle because we knew they were there. And all of a sudden, a couple of hand grenades go off real close to me and literally pick me up off the ground. And I was uh, had shrapnel in my, my right arm and my flank, and uh, well, there's still 13 pieces of shrapnel in my chest to this day. The medic uh, tried, tried to get to me, and uh, he got me patched up pretty well on that. I took the, uh, the medic's rifle and went back online and uh, until that firefight was over and then I got kind of backed out of there. I came from a poor family. We were born and raised in uh, Beaverton, Oregon, and uh, spent uh, the first six years of my life in school, in a Catholic school. My father was uh, in the U.S. Army and uh, in uh, 41 to 44. Started off in the, uh, in the Philippines uh, fighting the Japanese. And then uh, when that settled down there, he got transferred to, uh, to Germany and uh, fought in the, uh, the Battle of the Bulge. Of course, when I was of age, uh, Vietnam was, uh, uh, you know, just firing up. So, yeah, that that had a lot lot to do with my going into service myself. I was 19 years old, and uh, I just felt it was my duty to uh, to serve my country. September of 1965, when I first went into service, and uh, went to uh, basic and AIT training in Fort Ord, California. From there, I uh, volunteered go to jump school. I loved uh, jump school. Uh, it, it was uh, just physical. I mean, you run everywhere in jump school. You run to chow, you run to formation, you run after you go anywhere in Fort Benning, Georgia, you ran and you ran and, and then you ran some more. We did uh, what they call a 34 foot tower. That's where you learn your body position coming out of an airplane and then you graduate the second week is called Tower Week, and they hoist you up in a in a 250-foot tower. But when you go to Jump Week, that's a whole other story. You have two sticks, and they both go out each side of the plane. So when the Jump Master says, stand up, hook up, and that's when you take your, your static line, and there's a cable that runs full length of the aircraft. You hook up to that, and then you and they say, go, 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 and then you start running. Basically, if you're back in the stick, you're almost running to get to the door. You come out in a high, in a, a real tight tuck position, and then uh, as soon as you feel the, the jerk from your chute opening, you, you look up to make sure your canopy's, you know, inflated. You stand up, hook up, shuffle the door, jump right out, count the floor. If my chute don't open wide, I got a reserve by my side. If my reserve don't come around, well, watch me bounce right off the ground. So that we used to sing that when we're running everywhere in jump school, so. I don't know, but I think I might jump from an aircraft while in flight. Jump from an aircraft while in flight. In, uh, I was deployed to uh, Vietnam in April of uh, 1966. Landed in Saigon, which uh, is an uh, airport called Tan Sanut. I was assigned to, uh, uh, well, the 173rd Airborne in a reconnaissance platoon. And as reconnaissance, our goal was to uh, search and destroy, seek out the enemy. But most of the time, we ran into the enemy and gotten numerous uh, battles and firefights. And anything the enemy can use, whether it's food caches or arms, uh, munitions uh, caches and stuff like that, we, we would take it, destroy it. 
as blunt as it may sound, it's kill or be killed. And that's just the way we fought the war. Uh, they ambushed us, we ambushed them. You know, we bring in artillery strikes, we bring in airstrikes. You just, your, your job is to take the enemy out any way you can. This is it, live or die. The combat jump we made was, I remember that very distinctly, it was called Operation Junction City. That was the first combat jump uh, made since the Korean War. And since like, you know, 19, you know, the early 1950s. And this was February 1967, is when we made that jump on the Cambodian border. Seven hundred of us made made that jump. There's the uh, Life magazine cover. First combat jump, fifteen years, and they're referring back to uh, uh, the Korean War. And these are all the headlines uh, back in the states. Uh, U.S. launches biggest drive. Paratroopers drop into VC stronghold. If I would hit that LZ, I would have been a lot, lot happier. But in my case, they jumped us late and we ended up out in the jungle. That's what sticks in my mind, because then you're really on your own. You know, one guy's landing here and one guy's landing there. And it was just, you know, again, it was just kind of like organized chaos. Uh, one of the uh, infantry uh, divisions was, they were set up in one area, we're set up in another area and we're going to try to basically surround this NBA unit. That never actually transpired, but we ran across uh, other smaller units and that actually the, the operation was a success uh, militarily. Uh, it just didn't get that big unit that we wanted to. October of uh, 67. You know, we got ambushed, I was running point. I got shot in the stomach and, and I laid there and I thought, man, I, you know, I thought this was it. I was, of course, you're a 19 year old kid and you know, you haven't even lived yet. And you say, well, am I gonna survive this? And uh, found out later, you know, that, that round uh, hit my lung and my liver and blew a rib out of my back and I ended up losing I think a couple feet of my large intestine, but it just kind of blows you up inside. It was a, I was just praying I wouldn't bleed to death, you know, but somehow the Lord was with me, got me out of that mess too, and and that was the last battle that, that I was in. I had, you know, seven or eight people total in my squad at any one time, and we had, I think, 11 Purple Hearts between us, so. We were all shot up at least once and some of us twice. And I took this English class and you had to write a short story or a poem. So I decided to write a poem about the last battle I was in. It's called The Point Man. He was only 19, never strayed far from home till he listed in the army and into a combat zone. Though he was young and so much alive, the one thing that drove him was his will to survive. The war was unpopular in some people's eyes, but this young soldier refused to deny the solemn promise that he had made to his family and country that the price should be paid. The heat was unbearable in this humid land, the nightmarish country they called the dam. Malaria and typhoid were a dreaded disease. With conditions like this, you're never at ease. The pl platoon saddled up to go on patrol. The young, young soldier was frightened, hoping it wouldn't show. Fear and anxiety filled every joint when the sergeant had told him that he would be point. The dawn was gray with a low-lying fog. The platoon moved through the jungle and into a bog. The shot rang out. The trap had been sprung. 
like a spring that was coiled the fight had been gun. Charlie was sneaky, he knew the terrain. He would fight to the death to defend his domain. The ambush he set was very well planned, with booby traps and claymores. His positions were manned. The sergeant yelled up, ambush, we all hit the ground. Grenades were exploding with a horrible sound. The Viet Cong started to close on the flank. Before we knew it, we were firing point blank. The battle raged on for an eternity, it seemed. With the cries of the wounded, it felt like a dream. The medic then tried to save the men dying. Those who were wounded, even though he was wounded himself, he kept on trying. It was the young point man who maintained the lead. It was the first one to be hit and the first one to bleed. He started to pray as he gazed toward the sky and laid on his back not wanting to die. His life began uh, flashing before his young eyes, not knowing if this day would be his demise. He prayed to the Lord who created this land, please don't let me die in this place called Nam. His prayer was answered, though it took a long time. The Viet Cong fought hard but could not hold the line. And it may never be known why this life was freed. But you see that young point man, it was me. And that was that. You know, that happened now, I think, like 55 years ago. But when you look back at all that, you see it never, it never leaves you. Okay, these are uh, some uh, pictures I took when I was uh, in Vietnam. I have a, uh, I think I probably took a probably 150 Kodak Instamatic uh, camera with these. And, you know, it's nice to look at some of the guys you, you remember, a lot of these people I knew in this, uh, in this uh, book. These are some of the operations. Okay, this here is what they, is the tags the medic put on you. Uh, so they know when the, you get medevac out there and get to the hospital, They'll give the, uh, the personnel at the hospital uh, a heads up on what happened to an individual and what you've done for them prior to uh, getting to the hospital. So right here it says uh, gunshot wound to the abdomen. And boy, some of this has my name up there, my outfit. My, uh, my wife and I were married and been married now for almost 54 years. Two great sons, five grandchildren. I had a great career in uh, law enforcement for 33 years. You know, the, the service meant a lot to me. Uh, you, you find out, you know, real quick, you know, what our country really stands for and what you're fighting for. But it's important to, to be patriotic and I swear if I had it to do all over again, I know, even knowing what I know now, I, I wouldn't hesitate. Yeah, yeah I, I went through hell, uh, and I a lot of pain, a lot of, a lot of stuff happened to me over there, but it's, gosh, somebody's got to do it. You know, if everybody took an attitude that, you know, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a country like this if we didn't, if people weren't willing to step up.